morning guys so today on the schedule we got a comparison of the new balance sc trainer v2 here with the saucony endorphin speed 4. now i ran a lot of miles in the speed 4 in january and i haven't gotten too many miles in the sc trainer v2 recently but in december when i first got in i was rocking with this thing heavy it is a super comfortable shoe I did 22 mile long runs in it, stuff with marathon pace, recovery runs. It's really versatile and it's not the lightest weight shoe, but it has a nice roll to it that, I don't know, when I'm feeling beat up like I kind of am today, when I just want something comfortable to cruise in, but with a little bit more pop than my 1080s, this is what I go toward. So I've been recommending this recently as a shoe for four hour marathoners and this morning I'm gonna put it through a little bit of a test for that running at around probably eight minute pace just cruising rocking the legs to reacquaint myself with the shoe and then when we get back here we're going to do a comparison with that speed four because these are two of the top plated training shoes on the market right now so the speed four though and what's interesting about this guy it has the plastic plate in here but it is positioning itself as more of that snappier faster shoe i'm not quite sure that's what i got from it with my experience so i do think this is going to be an interesting comparison to see how these two slightly softer friendlier plated trainers versus something like the boston 12 compare all right guys so time to get some miles in these things and then we'll be back hit the backyard for that comparison All right guys, just finished a nice relaxed 10 miler, one hour and 20 minutes. I have this theory that a relaxed 10 miler will be about the same time as your half marathon PR, maybe within two to three minutes. Let me know if that holds up for you. Anyway, man, these things are smooth. It's just cruise control. Now, the new Al SC Trainer V2 here is a shoe that I've enjoyed for a lot of relaxed, comfortable, smooth, easy, rocking and rolling miles, whatever you want to call them. But those days where I want to just get out there, move, not worry about pace, but have something with a little bit more bite and aggression to it than a slow max cushion shoe like a Gel Nimbus 25 or a New Balance 1080 V13. Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, on the other hand, this guy is the successor to one of the shoes that I put a ton of miles on in 2022 and 2023, Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, but it is just not hit for me so far. I did the 100 mile week test with it, but something about the shoe, whether it's the amount of flex flexibility that it has or this chunky heel out in the back or the narrow fit or all of those things combined have made this a shoe that I do not love so far. I'm still trying to find out exactly what it's best for, but it is a shoe that can go fast when you want it to. Now, when I got the Speed 4 in, I did a comparison of this against all of the plated training shoes that I have, but the reason why I wanted to go in depth Put these two against each other today is because we are on a quest to find the best marathon racing shoe for every runner out there and to me these are two of the best options for longer miles where you're not going to be going at your fastest top end speed but you want a little bit more snap than a non-plated training shoe can offer the new balance sc trainer v2 here is definitely a little bit more of a relaxed feeling ride while the speed 4 has a little bit more snap and aggression to it but both of these are going to work pretty well for a lot of runners out there who are looking for an alternative to more aggressive marathon racing options like the Nike Alpha Fly or even the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4. First up, let's dive into the midsole of the SC Trainer V2 here. So this uses the Fuel Cell Foam. Now, Fuel Cell is New Balance's foam for these faster training shoes and racing shoes. It's also their line of fast shoes. So in the Fuel Cell line, we have the Rebel V4, we have the SC Elite V4. SC Trainer V2 is actually the 2023 version of this Fuel Cell shoe. 2024, we're gonna be getting the V3. But in here, we see a big stack of this 40 millimeter stack. In V1, the shoe actually went up to I believe 43 or 45 millimeters. They brought it down a little bit, made it a tiny bit more streamlined. And they also stuffed this carbon fiber plate in here. So this is an interesting shoe in the plated training segment because a lot of the other shoes, they don't use the carbon fiber plate. They use either plastic or rods or carbon composite. This is one of the only plated training shoes that uses that same carbon fiber plate. Now the Speed 4, this guy uses a plastic plate. They call it winged nylon. You can see the wing right here. 
And then you can also see poking through the bottom, we got this plastic piece as well. Now the stock here is a little bit less. This is around 37, 38 millimeters, depending on how you test. And we got a moderate drop here in the forefoot. Now the plastic plate is gonna give the shoe a little bit more flexibility than the SC Trainer V2. And that's gonna be a key difference here. This is a little bit more flexible, whereas the SC Trainer V2 feels softer and more cushioned, even though it is a very stiff ride from the carbon fiber plate. Now a key difference of these two is the rocker. So Saucony actually popularized the rocker profile, but if you look at the New Balance, this has a much more aggressive rocker up in the front. The rolling sensation is just super nice where you get on this. And it's also pretty comfortable for walking because of the softer midsole versus the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4. This is a little bit of an awkward feel walking. The rocker doesn't feel as prominent as even the Speed 3. And something about the way that they've contoured this foam in the back here makes it a little bit of a clunky ride for walking and for jogging. This is not my favorite part of the shoe, what they did with this midsole out in the back. You can see that they've split the foam here and they have it extend off the back platform, which is something that should add a little bit more stability. But for me, it just added kind of a braking force to the shoe. Now, because the SC Trainer V2 here uses more foam and it's a little bit of a denser foam versus the Saucony Power Run PB, which is a lighter, bouncier foam, the SC Trainer V2 is coming in with a little bit of a heavier weight. I'll flash that up on the screen for you. On foot though, I don't feel a huge weight penalty. I'm not sure why that is. It might be because the way that the rocker is shaped just encourages a nice rolling along feeling. Same thing with that Hoka Cielo X1. Sometimes it's not exactly about the weight and the specs on paper. It's more about the ride. And the ride of this is a really nice friendly ride that doesn't make it feel too harsh or too heavy. All right guys, now heading up to the upper here, I did a fit and feel comparison of these on foot. So we will cut to that footage now. These are both 10 and a half US men's. I got a lot more room up here in the New Balance. It's just a little bit of a wider fit. The Saucony is very snug and narrow. You can see on the side here, my toe is popping off. I also get rubbing and irritation along this side a little bit. This is just a very tight fit. Also in general, walking around here, the SC Trainer V2 is just much smoother. It feels a lot more natural. The Speed 4 on my left foot here, it's just chunky. Something about this heel out here in the back, it just feels like a really awkward shoe to walk on. And I know Saucony popularized these rocker training shoes with their speed roll technology. But this New Balance feels like just a much better roll to it. The Saucony doesn't have a roll at all. It's just this chunk on the heel and then you slap down on the forefoot. I know some people like to describe shoes as slappy and that is a word that applies perfectly to the speed for walking around here and running if you are any type of a heel striker or even midfoot striker this back of the foam here is gonna act as almost a braking forge and sometimes i like having more foam out in the back because it cushions but in this one it doesn't really do that i don't know why it acts as kind of a braking force and then you slap down with your forefoot something about the geometry of the speed four is really holding it back from being a good shoe the geometry plus the fit and that's getting exposed right now as i have both of these on my feet because the new Balance fits a lot better and the geometry is just so much more comfortable now i did have one of the runners here on the channel report to me recently that something about the inside of the sc trainer behind the laces on top of their foot was giving them irritation i have not experienced that but i did want to pass that along to you that maybe this fit won't be the best for you i did have someone else report that something around the toe box bothered them i haven't had any fit issues in this shoe i do think the upper material itself isn't the best it's not the stretchiest upper material itself on the Saucony is a little bit better more breathable stretchier but the fit is just tight. So as I mentioned there, New Balance SC Trainer V2 gonna be a little bit roomier, more comfortable. Socket Endorphin Speed 4, way tighter squeeze, also a little bit less of a friendly step in feel for walking. SC Trainer V2 would be my choice if you want a shoe that you can also walk in and feels comfortable for doing normal everyday life stuff. Speed 4 is just a weird fit in general. I don't love the way that they did this midsole geometry here. It, the back and the front can feel a little bit disconnected on step in. The upper material itself is fine. You do get a little bit of padding out here in the back, not as much as the SC Trainer V2 here, but overall the fit on this is much narrower and a little bit less comfortable than the SC Trainer V2.
Now in terms of the rides here, these are presenting two different options altogether. In the SC Trainer V2 here, you're gonna get a much more comfortable, smooth, cushioned, relaxed ride. The big draw here is this nice rolling rocker on the bottom that just tips you along at any pace. And the fuel cell foam provides a nice compression and impact absorption. Now sometimes when I'm running in the shoe, I can feel that it has a carbon fiber plate. However, I do think that's necessary because this fuel cell foam is very soft and if the plate weren't in here, it would be way too squishy and squiggly. Having the plate is adding some stability and also having that wider base out here in the back is gonna do the same thing and add a little bit more stability. Now Speed 4 also has a little bit of a flared wider base, but it, the way that they've done it is they just flare out the foam at the bottom. I prefer the way they did it in the SC Trainer V2. This has a much more natural comfort oriented ride. Speed 4 again just feels clunkier, even though it does have a decent amount of stability. It feels like you really land on this back here first before tipping forward to the front. I've used both of these for 22 mile long runs with the SC Trainer V2. I did one long run where I alternated marathon pace with my everyday running more relaxed pace. This was a really good shoe for that. For me, it feels great at my normal everyday running paces and it can do that marathon pace, which for me right now is anywhere from 6.15 to 6.45. It doesn't have the same aggression as the carbon fiber plated racer, but the plate really does come alive at faster paces. Now I know some people have reported that it feels too soft and too mushy for workouts and I wouldn't love doing any 5k or 10k pace in the shoe which for me is sub six minute pace but for any of my marathon pace regular everyday running efforts it feels really good and it's a shoe that I can comfortably have on foot for two plus hours. Speed 4 on the other hand this built best for me for those steady miles which for me is around seven minute pace it didn't feel great for slow running it didn't feel great for workouts for almost every run I've done in the Speed 4 it feels like there's a better option out there so if you're looking for a plated training shoe that's fun for everyday miles but softer and more forgiving that's where the SC Trainer V2 comes into play if you want a plated training shoe that's fast and fun I wouldn't go for the Speed 4 there's a lot of other options that I've been testing that are better than this Boston 12 is my top choice if that's a little bit too firm for you Puma DV8 Nitro 2 is another choice however with the Speed 4 here if you are a four foot striker maybe a little bit of a lighter runner I do think you could get some benefit out of it because the foam in here is really nice the power on PB provides a nice bounce it's just what they've done with the geometry here has made this a pretty awkward ride in the version 4. All right guys, heading around to the back here, do a little outsole and durability comparison. So these both have about 100 miles on them, and you can see that they have similar wear. In the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 here, you can see we have started to wear down into the foam a little bit, and the outsole is pretty much rubbed flat on this lateral area. That's the same thing that we're seeing in the SC Trainer V2 here, and we also do see that same wear on the foam. Neither of these guys are gonna be the most durable option out there. Boston 12, Puma DV8 Nitro 2, those two are gonna get way more miles than these. These both don't have the best outsole rubber coverage, but in terms of the performance of the rubber itself, Speed 4 has a little bit better traction in the wet. SC Trainer V2 here has New Balance's old version of the rubber. I think they improved the compound a lot in the new Rebel V4 and SCLE V4. In this version, it's just okay. Now, in terms of the performance of the foam itself, some runners have reported that the fuel cell in the SC Trainer V2 has gone flat for them around 100 miles. Now, I've taken this up to 100 miles. I haven't experienced that yet. It still feels fun. It still feels bouncy. And as I keep getting more miles in the shoe, I will report how it does. However, I can tell you that softer foams tend not to have as much longevity as firmer foams. So just knowing that, if longevity is a number one consideration for you, I wouldn't go for the SC Trainer V2. Again, I'd look at the Boston 12 or the Puma DV8 Nitro 2. Those are probably going to get some more miles for you than the SC Trainer V2 here. This guy is comfort, it's not speed, it's not durability. There's other shoes for that. So if you do want comfort, that's what you're gonna be getting out of the SC Trainer V2. Now the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 with this Power Run PB here, this is the foam that has average durability for me. I can get about 300 miles out of a pair of these, which is pretty standard. I have seen some runners take these shoes way beyond that but i also had the foam and one pair of speed threes go at 270 miles so you can expect anywhere from 300 to 500 likely in the speed four 
Now, in terms of who these are best for, the SC Trainer V2 is a really good choice if you want something comfortable for relaxed miles. Also, as a four hour marathon shoe, this is a really good choice. It's super comfortable. Whenever I have it on my feet, I wanna just keep going and going. I took this up to two and a half, three hours a few weeks ago, and it is a really fun, comfortable shoe for that type of a run. Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 is also a really good choice for that. Probably a little bit better than the Speed 4 because the carbon fiber plate in that shoe adds a little bit more support and bounce than the Speed 4 here. Now, Speed 4, I've gotten to the point with this guy where I just cannot recommend it for anybody. There's a better choice out there for nearly every type of run. However, if you did really like the Speed 3 and you just want to see what the Speed 4 is like, I'd say go ahead and give this a try. But to me, it is a step back from the Speed 3. The rocker is more awkward. It's heavier. What they did with the heel chunk out here in the back doesn't work for me. The fit is tight. If you want a fun, fast shoe for shorter runs, I'd go for the DV8 Nitro 2. If you want something fast for longer runs and don't mind a firmer ride, I'd go for the Boston 12. And if you want a long run shoe that's soft, comfortable, and supportive, I'd go for the New Balance SC Trainer V2 here. Now the one category of runners I do think might benefit from the Speed 4 are lighter runners who are four foot strikers, as I mentioned earlier. And I did have a friend here on the channel report that she used this for, I believe a 10K up in New York City and she really liked it. So if you are a lighter runner looking for a race day shoe and you don't want something as aggressive as the Vaporfly, that would be my top choice for a lighter four foot striking runner. But this is gonna be a little bit more stable even though the heel is a tiny bit awkward. This is gonna be a better choice than the Vaporfly if you don't want something super aggressive, you want something with a little bit more support, and you also want something that you can train in. So some of you guys might get along with the Speed 4. It's definitely not going on my top recommendations list as I don't think it excels at any one thing, but for lighter forefoot striking runners who want a less aggressive race day option, this could be a good choice for you. If you made it to this point, thank you for listening to me sounding like Bane all day today. I'm gonna go chug another teaspoon of honey. We'll be back tomorrow with another video. We got a lot of good stuff coming through the house soon, so I'm hoping my voice bounces back so I can go in on the analysis for all the new shoes we got coming. All right, guys, I appreciate you. I will see you tomorrow.